get the show on the road. And actually, we're going to start with two review slides. Okay. This slide, if you'd have to go clear back to, this is part three. You'd have to go back to part one to see this slide if you wanted to. But we talked about um, the idea that, you know, each box on a periodic table has the symbol of an element, and within that box is usually two numbers. The whole number is the atomic number, the number of protons, and then it has a decimal number. So actually, I usually refer to this. Okay, this is like what I call the decimal number. Decimal number on a, in a box on the periodic table, okay? And that is how much an atom weighs of that type of element. Okay, it's average atomic weight. And again, we're going to hit this tomorrow um, with the coinium experiment, but that decimal number, the average atomic weight, has to take into consideration the different isotopes that exist for that element. And actually, that was one of the homework questions that you all handed in today. Okay. This is also a review slide, but this was actually from this part. Okay. We introduced the topic of a mole. And to me, I think the reason that physical scientists have to talk about a mole, moles like a dozen, okay, but if you had 12 particles, you have a dozen particles, excuse me, a dozen atoms, that's not anything you can sink your teeth into. But if you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, all right, that's something you can sink your teeth into, and that's called a unit of a mole, okay? All right. So now on to a new slide. All right. So you have the decimal number, that's how much an atom weighs, the concept of a mole, if you have a mole of atoms, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So there's this concept, and again, we, we're going to first apply it, we're going to apply it to atoms, but you could apply it to hockey pucks, you could apply it to rice grains, you know, like we talked about on Monday, you could apply it to basketballs, but we're going to apply this to atoms. And I like this concept because basically in its name is what it is. Okay, it's for a given element, what is its molar mass? So basically, it's the mass you need to weigh up on your scales to get a one mole of those cute little atoms of that particular element. That's the molar mass. Okay. Um, so units for molar mass are, I mentioned scale. It's like you have to go to the scale, pile on a certain mass, in grams, on that scale. Then you have a mole of atoms. So it's grams per one mole. I'm going to introduce this other way. If you have anything in the denominator, you can actually raise it to the negative power. So grams, grams per mole, number of grams in one mole, also could be written grams mole to the negative first. Okay. Um, so, so molar mass for the elements. You're like, how in the heck are we going to get to that? Well, we're going to revisit that decimal number. The molar mass, the grams you need to weigh out in order to get one mole of atoms of any given type of element, as long as it's a pure substance, okay, is that decimal number. So that's its molar mass. So that decimal number serves two purposes. It's its average atomic weight, and I didn't mention this, but it was on the slide, in atomic mass units, or AMUs, and it's also its molar mass, okay? So remember that that decimal number is the average atomic weight Remember, we take in the reason, uh, the whole average part. It's not a simple average. It's what we call a weighted average, like you did for your homework. You have to take into consideration how abundant each isotope is. Okay. So molar mass is that same number, but it's going to be in units of grams. That would be so many grams per one mole. We're going to do some exper We're going to do some examples here. So molar mass, you've got a periodic table, you've got the molar mass of the elements. Grams per one mole. It's like, I like to say molar mass is kind of like a, like a physical property of stuff, okay? So we have sulfur and carbon, okay, pure substances. Notice at the top, oh, by the way, so if you were to find sulfur on the periodic table, it is atomic number, looks like 16, Okay, so that's 16 protons, but the decimal number for sulfur is 32.07. Okay, that's the decimal number for sulfur. So we could say that the molar mass for sulfur is 32.07 grams of sulfur for one mole of sulfur. So if you want to have 6.022 times 10 to 23rd sulfur atoms, this is what you got to weigh out. 
because one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atom. So the decimal number for carbon is 12.01. So the molar mass for carbon is 12.01 grams of carbon <coughs> for one mole of carbon atoms. So guess what? Sulfur's a little heavier. Okay? So if you want to have one mole, you've got to weigh out more. How much more? Well, about 20, 20 more grams. That's how that works. Physical property of these elements. You get it off the periodic table. You'll never take an exam in here without the periodic table. Okay? Periodic table is our friend. So let's go ahead and take a minute and each one of these beakers is a pure substance and let's look at the periodic table, see if we can fill in um, how much, somebody says there's a mole in all this stuff. Okay? Each beaker has a mole of pure element. Some looks a little fluffier than others, doesn't it? 32.07 grams is what's in there. How do I know that? Because it's sulfur. And the decimal number for sulfur is 32.07. Okay, so it's 32.07 grams per one mole. Um, let's see. Magnesium. What's the symbol for magnesium? Uh, it is Mg. I always get magnesium and manganese. I always have to concentrate. Capital M, lowercase g. Um, the decimal number for magnesium is... Very good. 24.31. 24.31 grams. I can't see that very well. 24.31 grams in this beaker. What is the symbol for tin? It is SN. Very good. Okay, uh, symbol for tin is SN. So, let's see, what's its atomic number? It is 50. Very good. And what's its decimal number? Uh, yeah, I got that too, 118.71. So there's 118.71 grams of tin here. Why? Because I know it's one mole. Uh, symbol for silicon? SI, very good. What's the atomic number for silicon? Silicon. 14. 14, it has got 14 protons in the center of every silicon nucleus, um, or in the nucleus of every silicon atom. All right, so 14, so what's the decimal number? 28.09, I like it. 28.09 grams is what's in there. Why? Because somebody said they got one mole of it. Symbol for copper. Cu. Very good. Um, what's its uh, number of protons? What's its atomic number? Twenty nine. Very good. It's got twenty nine protons in the center of every atom. Okay, so its decimal number is yes, sixty three point five five grams is the mass of copper in there because I got one mole of copper. Okay, so if you want one mole of atoms, you got to weigh out different amounts, right? So there's there is just to remind you then there's there's one mole of atoms in each of these. There's also 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in each of these. Cool. All right. So y'all don't really have to write this down, but I'm going to kind of show you how do we get from what we already know about an atom to, to molar mass. You can if you want. But one of the things we talked about in part one was those decimal number is the weight in atomic mass units of one atom of that type of element. So we could say, we could pick on copper, and the decimal number for copper is 63.55. That's 63.55 AMUs for one copper atom. All right? Well, another thing we talked about recently, I'm getting my days mixed up, but I think this was Monday. We said that in terms of AMUs, those are really small, right? <laughs> in terms of AMUs, we have this cool relationship, and actually... If you go with one gram, we could say it's approximately equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd AMUs. And the reason I'm doing a factor label problem here, my AMUs could cancel out at that point. And I have grams per atom. But I want grams per mole. So I could introduce a third term here to go ahead and try to get moles in the denominator, which I do. Okay, we said that for any substance, including copper, Okay, if you want one mole of copper atoms, you would have to have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms. Okay. 
So now the beauty of this is if we're letting things cancel, our AMUs have canceled, okay, our units of atoms have canceled, and we're left with units of grams per mole for copper. And can you guys see how my Avogadro's number is going to cancel? <laughs> Who needs to put that in our calculator? Okay, so when the dust finally settles, you know, I've just kind of done a little, I guess they call it a proof in math, to kind of walk you through why that decimal number is both for copper, the atomic mass units per atom, and it's also the molar mass, the grams per mole, in case you needed convincing. We can do that for any element. All right. So it's like a physical property of an element, okay? Not all elements definitely have different molar masses. And if you ever have a physical property like density or weight percent or molar mass and you want to know how you can use it, look at the units that are there. Okay, we have units of grams and moles. So we can actually flip it if we need to. We can use that to get back and forth and get it from grams to moles of an element. You can also go from moles to grams of an element. So let's do a few problems. So whenever you see something in brackets like that, let me explain. These brackets mean that it's, how do I say, whatever is in the brackets is unnecessary. Put another way, is whatever's in the brackets, or I guess I should say the entire brackets, um, won't always be there. So let's see what I mean here. All right. So we're dealing with calcium. So here in a minute, we're going to make sure we look at the periodic table, look at the decimal number for calcium. It says how many moles in brackets of calcium atoms is 0 .7, excuse me, 0 .487 grams of calcium? So what I mean to say about the brackets is I could write this, and I will probably later say, is how many moles is 0.487 grams of calcium. And what I'm leaving out is I want you to go moles of calcium atoms. Okay, so that's how that is. Um, all right. So I mentioned uh, periodic table. So on the periodic table, if you look up calcium, which is atomic number 20, Okay, so there's 20 protons in the center of every calcium atom, but the decimal number for calcium is 40.08. It means two things. It means it's uh, average atomic weight, and it also means it's molar mass. So since we're trying to go from grams to moles in this example, we're going to focus on the, the molar mass. Okay, so 40.08 grams per one mole. Okay. Because I'm not, I'm a firm believer in if you see that this first number up here, okay, that first number, the 40.08 G slash MOL, you cannot use that as it is in a problem in here, okay? You have to unpack it. And this is what I mean by unpacking it, okay? Now, we know that we could flip it, and that's cool. For calcium, we could say one mole of calcium atoms would weigh 40.08 grams. And then the last thing is just to kind of flatten it out. Physical property for calcium. Okay, 40.08 grams of calcium is equal to one mole of calcium, one mole of calcium atoms. The molar mass of calcium. On Monday, we talked about, what was it? Well, I can't remember. We talked about mole of rice grains a lot. It's like, it's a lot of little rice grains. And then a mole of hockey pucks, was it, would be equal in mass to the earth? I can't remember. Something like that. I think that. it was like mass to the moon. Oh, mass to the moon. Yeah. Okay. So but the basketballs was, it could fit the into a uh, ball bag size. A ball bag. Yeah. Okay. But in that case, for hockey pucks, its molar mass is the mass of the moon. That's a smaller mass. It's a lot. It is a lot. All right. So to work this problem, you know how we kind of put arrows up? I'm putting the arrows up. So kind of the strategy is we're gonna we were given grams and we want to end up with moles. And then over the arrow is how we're gonna accomplish that. So we accomplish it using the molar mass. I love the molar mass 
my favorite is molar mass of magnesium. Okay, I know. <laughs> um, we're going to use the molar mass of calcium, the decimal number for calcium. And then as is our case, we're going to start with the number of grams over 1. Okay, it's, it's really not going to be too bad. Number of grams we want to convert over 1. I know it's not over 1, but I would really put over 1. And then we're going to use that equality, that physical property of calcium, the molar mass of calcium, to go from grams. We want grams to cancel and we'll be left with moles. So what does this ratio look like? We want to be left with moles and we want grams to Mm -hmm. 40.08 grams over one mole. Exactly. That's it. Twala. So here's a question for you. Those decimal numbers on the periodic table, the molar mass for the elements, is there uncertainty in those? Yep, there is definitely uncertainty in them. Um, so, to round this thing, hold up the number of fingers. How many, fin how many sig figs? I'm liking it. Three. Three. Yep. Okay. So to show three significant figures, this first zero, although it's important, is not significant. You know, we uh, rounding was actually unit one in here, but I think I warned you that rounding is here to stay. So. Weird. I got one, two, two. You did? Mm -hmm. One, two, one, five. Well, it could be I made a mistake. Or I did. <laughs> it definitely has happened. Four, eight, seven, <coughs> divided by eight. Mm -hmm. I did too. One, two, one, five? Yeah. Thank you. Need to change my slides. Very good. Zero point zero one two two. Thank you. Next one. Next example problem. Again with the brackets, okay. But in this case, it says basically you're given moles and you're supposed to find grams. So we're going from moles to grams. We're changing it up. It's not calcium, it's boron. So we're going to have to use a periodic table. Look at the decimal number for boron. Okay. So uh, it could say what mass in grams is 0.133 moles of boron without the word atoms. Okay. All right. So the decimal number for boron is 10.81 grams per mole. Okay. And we could say, unpack that, 10.81 grams of boron per one mole of boron. Of course, the flip is fine too. There's one in one mole of boron, it would weigh, have a mass of 10.81 grams. Okay, we could flatten it out. 10.81 grams of boron is equal to one mole of boron. Kind of your choice there. And let's do something different. I'm going to call from left to right, I'm going to call this first. Ratio A, and I'm going to call second ratio B. And I'm going to ask you which one is going to be our second term. Okay, so let's work the problem. So the strategy looks like this, where this is a moles to gram problem. And kind of over how, an how we can execute this, you see the flattened version of the molar mass for boron, 10.81 grams of boron for one mole boron. <coughs> Okay, so the, what's the first term going to be? 1.33 moles of boron. Right, very good. 1.33 moles of boron. Now, your choices are A or B. A or B. B. How many people say B? No, I mean A. How many people say A? Yeah. I, did. I looked at it wrong. Allie says A, too. We're all thinking A. Exactly. Very good. 10.81 grams over one mole, so our moles will cancel. Perfect. I like it. So raise your fingers. How many sig figs? Three. Three. I'm liking it too. <coughs> See if you get this one. Round of three sig figs. 14.4 grams. One. 
<laughs> this very simple problem of going from mass to moles or moles to mass, that's what we just did. Okay. Does that remember what we're doing tomorrow for uh, lab? Or is it that's one of the things. Go for all. <laughs> it's go for all mass instead of molar mass. Because it would be hard for you guys to count like uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 28 <laughs> objects. So I came up with another unit it's called a gopher instead of a mole. Nice. Yeah. But um, this simple thing, I don't know if this, this is significant in chemistry. Because my, the, the, when we get going with chemical reactions, the thing is, it's not about grams. It's not, it's about number of particles. The number of particles is so, you know, if you want carbon to react with hydrogen, it's not about grams of carbon reacting with grams of hydrogen. It's about moles of carbon reacting with moles of hydrogen. It's about individual particles. You can actually see that when you go to match them up. Grams, eh. Moles, yes. Okay, so. Um, oh, I forgot to put this in there. Ten points extra credit, people. So on a separate piece of paper, and you see the, the rules here. I'm going to leave this up for a little while, and I'm going to work it. I like your notebook, by the way. It's got like a, yeah. yeah, it looks like some sort of nebula or something. These are similar to what we just did. Like I said, you can work together, work by yourself. I have calculators. Anyone want, want to borrow one?
too bad. Yeah, so if you're kind of, if you got it down, go ahead and get her ready to hand it. That'd be great. Like, oh my gosh, really? And here it is. Ooh. I know. Sorry. All right. So this is where if you're if the if the numbers seem overwhelming, if the thing you need to do on these problems seem overwhelming, just take a deep breath. And if you can't go get a cup of coffee, at least take a deep breath. Okay? And let's just see. All within this part, part three, we have actually covered enough to do these problems. Okay. So the first one's dealing with lead. Um, actually, they're both having to do with lead, right? Well, that's something. I can find lead on the periodic <coughs> table. Kind of, it's all about kind of psyching yourself up. Out, up, happy, up, okay? So can you see where the first one, and, and I'm, I'm all, sometimes, maybe in a situation like this, I'm about kind of diagramming. We've been saying what, the, you know, what we're trying to do. So basically, notice it's, it starts with atoms. I'll even put the number in. We have 7.87 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. I'll go ahead and put lead atoms, okay? And we want to end up with a good unit of, of mass would be grams. We want to end up with grams. So I'll put our grams over here. So here in a minute, on the next slide, I'm going to have a officially diagram this, but can you see where we can go, the moles is the kind of in-between. If we had moles, we can use the molar mass of lead, like, just like we did, to get to grams, if we had moles. And actually, on the problems that you did for me today, we know how to go back and forth between moles and atoms using Avogadro's number. So I'll show you. That's actually kind of the strategy. And if we take a look at the bottom one, it kind of has a similar thing. Let's see. It gives, gives you the mass, so that would be 0 0.330 grams. Okay, that's what we're starting with. What is the total number of lead atoms? We want to get to atoms. I left space for something, and that space is moles again. We can go from grams of lead to moles of lead using the molar mass of lead, just like we did. And we can go from moles of lead to individual lead atoms using one mole of anything is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of anything. So that's the strategy. So officially, here, here's the, the official. Oh, before we get to the official, oops, sorry. So moles is going to be the in-between for both of these. Um, and we know, in the case of anything, including lead atoms, one mole of anything is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of that. So these are, these are the inverse of each other. They're the flip of each other. We can use them as we need to. The other thing I said we need to do is look at the decimal number for, for lead. And it's, it's, it's uh, heavy. And I'm not sure why lead actually has only one decimal in its uh, average atomic weight and its molar mass. It's just all these. Down it's pretty heavy. One lead atom weighs 207.2 AMUs. The molar mass for lead is 207.2 .2 grams of lead per one mole of lead. So here's the deal. Basically, between that slide and this slide, we're going to knock out these problems with, with these ratios. I just thought of it. There's a possibility that it could actually literally be 207.2000. Yeah, but... I, I just wonder if there's almost yeah. uncertainty in the relative abundances of lead. I don't know. It's always, it's always kind of wondered me. Because, like, what does this one say? Where is lead? Atomic number... Oh, there it is, 82. Yeah. Sometimes the decimal number will be a little bit different on different periodic tables. This one also says 207.2. All right, so here we go. Let's do it. Okay. So I kind of mentioned this strategy. So in this case, we are going from the number of lead atoms to grams of lead, okay? So we're going to go to moles first. The number of atoms, 7.87 times 10 to the 23rd lead atoms. We're going to go to moles first using Avogadro's number. 
the definition of a mole. So over how to accomplish that, I wrote one mole is equal to, you don't have to put lead atoms, but one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That's how we're going to accomplish that. And then, like we were just doing this, this morning, we're going to go from moles of lead to grams of lead using lead's molar mass of 207.2 grams per mole. I know that in unit one in here, you guys definitely did um, problems where you had to have more than one conversion factor kind of lined up. And that's kind of what we're doing. Are you having two factor, two, two steps? All right, so what's the first number is going to be the number of atoms over one? Okay. Sometimes students ask, um, do I have to keep saying lead atoms or can I just abbreviate it for atoms? Well, if it's just isolated, if you're showing all of your work, you probably can lose the PB part of it. Okay. But we were given 7.87 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Put that over one. Now, look back uh, two slides. Call that first one with Avogadro's number A. Call the second ratio B. How many people think we're going to use A here? How many people think we're going to use B here? B wins out. Very good. Perfect. And then using that ratio, notice then that the atoms cancel and the lead atoms cancel, we're left with moles. Perfect. Now we want to do one more step to get from moles to grams. So look at the slide right before this one, or two slides before this one, I guess I should say, and call the first ratio A and the second ratio B. Okay. How many people think we're going to now use the molar mass, we're going to use the A ratio? B2. Very good. So now if we just tack in one more term, and we're going to kind of have to wrap around a little bit. In your paper, it's going to show this side by side. You don't have to <coughs> but in putting this kind of as our third term, now units of moles cancel. And we're left with units of grams, which is what we want to be left with. So again, if you focus on the units, that will give you confidence that you have it set up correctly. Okay, uh, fingers please. How many sig figs are we going to round this to? I'm liking it. Three. Very good. So this is one where you guys are going to, again, make sure that, um, make sure that when you put in, for instance, this number, let me change my color here. When we put in this number, okay, make sure that you do it this way. You're going to put 7.87, and then you are going to hit either, it'll either say EXP or SCI or EE. Seems like most times it's EE. You're going to hit one of these keys, and then you're going to hit 23. That's it. Okay, and then you're going to say times 207.2. And you're going to divide that by 6.022 EEEXP SCI 23. Okay. Any questions about that? 171 grams of peanut butter. Right. Okay. Is that what you got? Let's do one more. Okay, let's look at the second one. In this case, we were going from grams all the way to atoms. So we're going to go through moles, though. So grams to moles, we're going to use that molar mass of lead, that 207.2 grams per one mole. And then to go from moles of lead to lead atoms, we're going to use, it's called Avogadro's number, that 6.022 times 10 to 23rd atoms in one mole. So the first term is going to be that 30.330 grams over 1. So go find your A and B for um, the molar mass 
okay? How many people think we're going to use A? How many people think we're going to use B? Very good. I usually call that the flipped version of the molar mass. Very good. And you chose B because you wanted grams of PB to cancel. Okay, we have left with moles of PB there. Okay, so flip back and find your Avogadro's number ratios, A and B. So, how many people think we're going to use A there? Six point oh two two times ten to twenty third um, lead atoms in one mole of lead. Perfect. And we should be done. Okay, get your fingers ready. We need to round this puppy. How many sig figs do we need? Three. Three. Very good. Because that trailing zero after the decimal is telling you that that, you know, that zero is going to be perfect. All right. So hopefully you got something like this. Yeah, that is a big number. But, you know, it should be a big number, right? That's kind of, whenever you do problems in, in physical science or problems anywhere, you're like, now, does that seem reasonable? Yeah, you should have a lot of atoms in a certain amount of lead like that. Any questions? Well, you know, it is a long weekend in theory. And I also wanted to mention that um, if, you're, if you miss a lecture or if you want to hear a lecture again or if you want to get notes again, remember that Twitter feed um, has got the links to all of these, okay? So I would encourage you to do that. Let's take a look at these. These will be due on Monday, 2935. 29, 30, 35, 36. And they look like this. All right. So 29 and 30 are right there. The answers to 29 are in the back of your book. Okay. But 29 looks like it's going from moles to grams. Do you need to use Avogadro's number for that? Mm -mm. 30 is going from grams to moles. Wait, sorry. I said that wrong. Looks like it's going from moles to grams. 30 is going from moles to grams. Do you need Avogadro's number there? No. This one's going from grams to moles. Did I say it? And moles to grams. Okay. So, well, you knew it's coming. So these down here, what was it? 30 what? 35 and 36. Thank you. So 35 and 36 are down here. 35 and 36. What's chopped off is the word how. Yeah. How many atoms are there in this mass of aluminum? Okay, so just to kind of remind you, if you want to get these in your notes, you can. If you jot down the number 35, basically you are going to go from grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum using its molar mass. And then you're going to go from moles of aluminum to Al atoms using Avogadro's number. Okay. Um, 36 is what is the mass if you have this number of um, platinum atoms? Okay. We're changing that to grams, right? Right. You're trying to get to grams, exactly. So you're basically going to go from this number of atoms oops, to moles using the molar mass of platinum, which is kind of fun, right? The molar mass of platinum. Oh, dang it. No, how are you going to go from atoms to moles? <coughs> Avogadro's number, perfect, yes. That's the A number, perfect. And then we can go from moles to grams using the molar mass of platinum. And I can never, there's so many P's on the periodic table. So, is it PT or PL? Oh, it is PT, molar mass of PT. So you're already kind of seeing, if you see a little M, 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 for me, that's molar mass. Okay? All right. Good luck. And the answers to 35 are in the back of your book.